What's and up? Now we transition. Yes. Now we go to Mr. Roger to taking off the sweater, as it were. <laughs> What's happening? What's going on, Peter? Not much. This is Adam Manish, y'all. This is Peter Martin, everybody. And we're the we're the You'll Hear It Brothers. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Um, man, I leave for a couple of days, and look, look at, at this. We have look a at new. All this. We have new colors. We have new uh, oh, right? walls. I tell you one thing that's the same. What is that sitting over there? The the, uh, the award, <laughs> the award, the YouTube plaque, the did Genco. We, did we have to pay for that. I think we might have. I think we might have. <laughs> the Genco. That might have been Celeste. a purchased item. That's our hundred thousand subscribers. I mean, we had Thanks to pay to for it guys. in blood, sweat, and tears. If that's what you're talking about. That's right, 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 right. This is the you'll hear it live um, Monday situation, and uh, always great to be here. We've got some news to catch up on, maybe a little bit. Some listening, maybe some YouTube's. We've got some good news we've got some mournful news we lost um we're losing too many folks from this music you know i think this year and i mean we always all are yeah and the last couple of years have been rough the last couple the last years have been really rough, really, really, really and, rough you know joey DeFrancesco's loss hangs heavy uh Absolutely. over the whole community Absolutely. Uh, musicians have been talking about it fans everybody um and it's just such a reminder for us to celebrate this music uh, all the time before folks are gone as much as we can. And then, you know, we do have Joey's music is still with us. Those that got a chance to know him a little bit personally or see him live. I think we all are for the better for his, you know, his celebratory spirit that he always brought to the music. I don't think I ever saw him either, you know, at one of his instruments or away from the instrument spirit where, that he always brought to the music. J just his, the joy that he had um, and that, he was such a great um, transfer and was so generous with that joy that he had. I mean, you heard that over and over again from audiences. You know, it just the music felt good. He was such a skilled player, of course, but he was also very skilled at um, infusing the community with just joy and uplifting it. So we uplift his name now and, and honor him and thank him. Um, gone way, 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 way too soon. One of the all-time greats. One of the all-time greats. One, one yeah. of the all-time greats, and it's and it's one of those situations where it's like, I've seen him numerous times over the years live here yeah. at Jazz St. Louis and other places, and I, you know, I wish I would have known that the last time I saw him was the mm. last time I saw him. Mm. So I could have, you know, it, it just it's a great reminder to just always stop and take it in and be where you are with these things because nothing lasts forever and. I mean, talk about a player who had zero barrier between them and the music that came out of their hands yeah. and the instruments that they played. Multiple instruments that he yes. played yeah. seemingly effortlessly, but you and I both know, yeah. um, as I can attest to, to uh, the last blues, that nothing is effortless when it comes to playing this music and being free like that. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge loss. So maybe we yeah. can watch a couple of things today and, and remember them. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then we've got a couple other things. First of all, we want to give a shout out here to um, Frank, who sent us a postcard. You haven't seen this yet. I just received this. First of all, we love snail mail. Did you know that, Adam? Do I, you like, do you know, you're kind of a young it. Do, do you know what snail mail them? is? Do we love snail mail? I love mail? snail mail. Okay. I mean, when it comes like this, look, we've got, this is Blue Mitchell and I believe a very young Chick Corea. Check that out. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, that is Isn't a very young cool? Chick Corea. Wow. Can you guys see that look there? That. On the, where should I put this? I don't know what's happening. Oh yeah, it's going to be a little it's out of. But no, you can see it there. The boca. Yeah, boca. What was happening? But so that's Chikoria, of course, at the piano. Did we already give and a? Um, by the way, speaking of boca, did we already give a shout out to Caleb and Dan for the new digs for the new? No, colors? let's go to that. Look, you can kind of see them there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Big shout out to Dan Martin and Caleb, the producer, who's edging even closer. We're actually going to see. With a little surprise, well, it's not much of a surprise for Caleb. It's a, a surprise Caleb, for Caleb you guys. Cam? We're gonna do a little Caleb cam. Yeah, okay. if I can get my tech going again. The the one little thing I contributed to this, uh, Caleb and and Dan and you, Adam, really brought this whole space together. It's super exciting. Well, and there's still more that's gonna be popping up, Peter, as you are are gonna see here in the next few weeks. Even more is is gonna be happening here. It's so great to have this space. Our new headquarters, we just got off of a listening session. Yes. Like literally right over there behind these cameras. Yeah, you finished a little late, by, by the way. Just full disclosure, was we started bit... late because Adam was too excited I about know. the Thelonious Monk uh, listening session. We were, we were pushing it back. As was, you would. It was longer than I expected. We didn't yeah. have a ton of pauses or anything. It was just a longer record. But yeah. it was it, it's Monk's time from 1964. We had a great time on Zoom with all of our Open Studio members, Open Studio Pro members and Open Studio Piano Access Pass, all ex Pass members. We had an awesome time. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. 
So, yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is, uh, if you want to send a snail mail, send it to 3333. You really, you can. We love, this is such a cool thing. So Frank basically just sent out, um, I won't read the whole thing and say his full name because, you know, he sent it uh, to us. But look, it's got a stamp on it. What do you know about that? I don't know nothing I, about that. It's got that. a stamp, a beautiful, but he just talked a little bit about his experiences at Newport Jazz Festival this year and um, uh, which all that he saw. He said, Peter, saw you here um, with Diane. Re oh, that must have been at Newport in 2004. That was a while ago. But he saw Terrence Blanchard and Cecile uh, McLaurin Selvant, Jason Moran, Nora Jones, a bunch of people uh, this year. So anyway, that was cool. Send us, send us your snail mail. If yeah, it's thank as you so much for that. That's 3333 so Washington Avenue. Open, send it to Open Studio, 3333 Washington, yeah. St. Louis, Missouri, 63103. Did you know that? 103. No, yeah. I've got too many zip codes. It's always <laughs> 631 something. Right, 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 yeah, right. Yeah. right. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone for sending all the messages, snail or otherwise. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, we got a we got a lot going on here in our new space. And shout out to all the Open Studio members who were on that listening session. So yep. And I'm excited about this, Peter. It's been a few weeks. You know, we've been upgrading this space so that we can do these lives and have a good time in here. So let's have a good time in here, man. That was let's do fun it. to start off with a little G Blues. Well, and we got some. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull this up as we're going here. We did get some requests to see the new digs uh, last time. So we wanted to honor that. This is kind of what my surprise. Would this be a good time for me to jump into that? Totally. Okay. So this is going to take me just a quick second here to do this. Um, oh, I just got a text from my mom too. Um, reminder about mom and dad needing a piano tuner. Love mom. Not, a little off topic, but it's a piano thing, you know. Okay. Uh. Oh, Caleb's cleaning up. That's right. Cause he knows about to see everything. This is like you're playing music. <laughs> uh. Uh. Well, by the way, uh, before we get too far into that, yeah. if you're watching this on the You'll Hear It uh, YouTube channel, which you are, and you haven't subscribed <laughs> to this channel yeah, yet, come on. if somehow you found us and you're not subscribed to the new, this is our second channel. So yes. we have our open studio channel, which we're going to continue on with tutorials and things of that nature. But this is for You'll Hear It Only for these lives. Hey. I think we might be ready. I like your little walk-on music. Ah. This is the tour here. And that's Adam. You want, you want to come back? This is, uh, look at this. A little behind the scenes tour. off the mics oh, okay keep his on okay so there's that okay so this is going to give you a little bit can you hear me on here can you hear me okay so this is the vantage from the other end here there's producer caleb say what's up to the folks there he's seeing himself a little too much we'll give you a little peek out onto the street here too this is uh-oh here we go out of Washington Avenue. We keep it real dark in here for the premium lights. Okay, so then we're going, this is of course, Professor Longhair here. This is the listening sesh area. Oh, that might be a future recording. And then we're gonna go into the um, main studio here. This is the main studio, the whiteboard. This is the kitchen here. It's all kind of exciting. This is our first, this is the dehumidifier. This is very important when you live in a, a semi-tropical environment. Um, some cameras here. It's the Tama drums. These are the Greg Hutchinson Memorial set, I believe. Fender Rhodes, random books. The piano, you've seen this. Then 
not going to go all the way back in here to the control room because I can hear myself somewhere. That's the control room. But it seems to be playing my stuff. Anyway, yeah, so this is the studio. Boom. Go back into the pod front, as it were. See if Caleb and Adam are still there. I gave him a tour. Did you guys see it too? I've just been jamming out here, haven't you? Producer Caleb. So that's, you know, kind of what's up. So much fun, Peter. <laughs> Did you guys get to see the tour so, too? The thousands of dollars of cameras in here and that's what we're <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. From. Well, you know, we just wanted to go mobile there. That was like I said, it was my own little my my, my little contribution, a little little, mo- little mobility. We hope you enjoyed that tour. It wasn't for you guys. It was for you, you've been around here, you know. Peter's yellow notepad. Exactly. That's where I put all the... Put where all the, the magic happens. Yeah. That's where the magic happens. When is the party coming soon? Peek on to Washington Street looks like a ghost town. It's a little slow right now, but it's going to... You know, we have a big festival coming up this weekend that's going to be encompassing this whole area. Well, Some, and this is more of a nighttime part of town. You know, yeah. this is not like... Uh, this is like the arts district where we have all the theaters and the concert halls and stuff. So yeah. it is a bit of a ghost town during the day. And yeah. And it'll be uh, a little bit busier in the, in the evenings. Right. But we have a big festival called uh, Music at the, Music at the the intersection yep matty yep. music at the intersection uh which is a little bit of a you know intersection of different genres and also intersection of the uh, missouri and you know we, we're here at the confluence what you know about the confluence adam the confluence of the rivers it's the <laughs> missouri it the river confl- and it, it's, it's the confluence i mean that's, I how, it was the we, confluence. that's how we say it in high ridge how you say it caleb Confluence? confluence. <laughs> Isn't it confluence? Confluence. confluence. <laughs> That's a, both the third way. Um, yeah, so the con, con, conflu, whatever it is, the confluence of the Missouri and the Mississippi, which is but a few miles from where we are sitting right now. Uh, confluence, Chayla says. <laughs> um, so, okay, cool. Uh, what else we got, Adam? Well, uh, that's pretty much it as far as the tour goes. So yeah. you're playing at this uh, Music at the Intersection this weekend, right? Saturday yes. night? Yep, Saturday night. We are opening or playing right before Erica Badu. That's so I don't know amazing. how that's going to go. Wow. I mean, I, th- I think we're going to play well. I'm looking forward to it. But I, I yeah. hope people can make that segue from jazz trio to, you Erica know, all Badu. out R&B superstar. But I think it should be cool. I actually saw Erica Badu and her band this summer at North Sea Jazz Festival. So, you know, that's going to be a, n- a nice thing. But it's, it's a very eclectic lineup. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, most of the groups, they said over 50 bands, a lot of folks from out of town. Um, and some local groups as well. Yeah, but I'm playing there fun. Saturday for the tribute to Montez Coleman. Ah, okay. It's happening in the morning. And then Caleb and I are playing on Sunday with Bob and um, this great singer Emily Wallace who are playing in the afternoon oh, yeah. on the field stage. Oh, so that's going to be nice. I'll be there all week. Yeah, and it's like, what, three or four stages, something three like that? Stages. Three yeah, stages. Three yeah, stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, should we maybe look at some of these videos that we have pulled up? These could yeah, be fun. Yeah, yeah. So we've got some great uh, videos of Joey D. Um, yeah. Joey D. Francesco, who we lost this past week, so sadly. 51 years old, man. I know. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's really crazy. Um, but there's some, exce- I mean, he was an exceptional human being and musician who started at a high level from a very young age. Yes. And I wonder if we can't pull up some of that, Peter. I know you have. Yes, I've got this. See if Caleb, if we can pull this one up. Pull up, uh, hey, Hi, it's Petey. Oh, there we go. Okay, so oh, this is so great. So this is something that I'd heard about, but I, I didn't realize there was footage of this. Uh, but there is, and this is when Miles Davis first got a chance to hear Joey D. Francesco. But I'm just gonna kind of let it roll so you can see what the vibe is here, because there's some cool surprises in here. You got sound from? I think I'm like four or five or something. I don't know. I'm not getting any sound here. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, he's got it. He's got it. It's coming. So this is in Philadelphia. This is like some kind of a local, 
um, television pro. It's so great that somebody has this footage. Can you see the bass player behind the um, Chad looking gentleman in the front? Chad. <laughs> I don't know why I just Chad. Uh, uh, he looks, looks like, like a Chad, doesn't look, he? That bass player looks very familiar, though. Yeah. I mean, that's... Can't quite place it. Is that but. Bob Costas with the interview? No, it's not. A young Bob Costas? Jim Nance, maybe? Jim Nance, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Are we good? Perhaps. We're good. Blow through what's your, okay, what's your organ player's name? The organ player here? Oh, let's, let's actually take a minute and meet the man. I thank you very much. We got Joey DeFranco on keyboards. Hi, Joey. Okay, first of all, Joey DeFranco. Joey DeFranco? So apparently he was not famous yet, but that's yeah. okay. How you doing? I grew up with a, a real child prodigy by the name of Joey DeFrancesco. And Christian is right on bass. Christian is right on bass. Christian, what happened after Miles Davis heard Joey play? He hired him. <laughs> he took him on the road with him about... Uh, four or five months later. Look at this. Shout out to the jazz video guy, too. Yeah. For this video. It's in Poland. It's like 86, 87. This thing is 88. Oh, 88. So he's like 17 or 16. Yeah, he'd be 17 years old. 17. That's Daryl Jones on bass, I believe. Fine. Check it out. out of high school to play with miles davis I know. and then when miles comes in, it's like he's like kind of at the peak of his thing miles is coming in to play back it's like yeah. wait do i keep playing and he does <laughs> he keeps going I, yeah. uh, Like uh, he's like like a like one man Domi and JD Beck from the eighties. I know, like, you know he's like I mean? the OG Domi. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, apparently the story goes that like like Miles pulled him out of a literally pulled him out of high school. Right. Like he got a, he got called to the office and said it's time to leave for Europe with right. States right. You have, like you have to leave school to That's go play music with Miles Davis. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, you're going to Poland. Yeah, but it's so great to see that that local TV clip. <laughs> of Miles just going, I, I guess Miles was just going around the local <laughs> TV station. I think it was some, yeah. And I mean, playing. I remember McBride tell, saying it's like, it was like the, um, like they call it like the all, like the all city jazz trio that they were part of. And they were just like, can you play at this TV show? You know, someone's going to be there or whatever. So it's just one of those cool things. It's so great that we have it documented though. Amazing. Amazing. Should we check out a little more recent Joey D? Absolutely. We can jump from, so this is something I, you know, it's just there's a lot of great footage and i encourage you of course just to go down the rabbit hole and enjoy the music um i love this venue and this is kind of a recent well it's from last you know about a year ago um but this the rockport music hall that's real um 
Atlantic Ocean there behind. It's a beautiful place. I've had the pleasure of playing. There's like a big curtain kind of like this here that goes behind it, but they often have it open for the performances looking out onto the... Uh, um, it's in Massachusetts, like north of Boston, like an hour or so. Uh, and it's a nice little beach and rocky area there. But he's got the sax and... Uh, let's see. Let me turn it up some. You might need to turn... Let's see... But this is with his trio. Name of the other keys player? I don't know. Right. Check out those bass lines that Joey's playing with his feet. So swinging, man. Yeah. was always you hear like he's always put, he was always putting yo I mean just the vibe yeah. and the feel man it's great to read people's out like the outpouring of memories and like Larry Golding's had a great post that mm. Joey was a one man B3 resurgence yeah in the late 80s early 90s Absolutely. like all of a sudden it became a very popular thing yeah again and it was all him yeah behind them but it's not like a dip tip it does it looks like a screen like yeah a, like a TV uh. So that's, of course, the great Joey DeFrancesco. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of great... I mean, this was something I, I, I just was checking out earlier today. There's a lot of just fantastic footage. So, um, you know, his music is still with us. Please go and enjoy it and, and spread the word, spread the love. He's, he's uh, gone but not forgotten, for sure. I have one that I would like to share. This is from uh, our home club here in St. Louis. This is Spell on Me. Uh, this is the J. Ross TV production. 
Mm. You know, J. Ross. J. Ross. Big shout out to J. Ross. He's local all video our, legend. Yeah, YouTube legend, J. Ross, catching all the good moments. This is in the old venue. This is before they remodeled. It's kind of casual footage that's... Man, it sounds so good, too. It has the feel of towards the end of the night. Yeah. Uh-huh. Virtuoso, yeah, really. Wow. Oh. That's the way to end the solo. I mean, we're all, what do we always talk about? Like, how do you structure a solo? How do you make, how do you make the obvious sound yeah. exploratory and hip? You know, yeah. he was a master of that. I mean, and, and you know, you said virtuoso, virtuostic, for sure. Is that what you said? I said Virtu- I said virtuosic. Virtuosic. Virtuostic. Well, that's a, that. Those are all good words. To Listen, we can make it. up words. <laughs> no, it's. I know exactly what you meant. Um, it's, uh, you know, he's. Joey was coming out of that tradition of, you know, beyond just organists, but for sure, like B3 players, but also pianists and other instruments, you know, talk about like guitar and stuff where, you know, he had this incredible facility, um, almost seemed kind of sort of limitless, but then combined with that deep sense of groove and he didn't ever run away from that velocity and that virtuosic nature but he pulled it into the groove it was never it was always like subservient to the groove and to the feel and you know to that deep sense of blues uh and the blues sensibility that he brought to the music so it was just you know i mean oscar peterson always comes to mind because he had that that like to me he's kind of like the root of that kind of playing no matter what instrument where, where you're not afraid if you've got it flaunt it you know but go so far beyond just the many many notes that Joey could could th- throw off at any moment. Well, it's the kind of virtu- virtuosity that it it makes you feel comforted. Yeah, like you always feel like you're in a very secure place when you're listening to Joey. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you never yep. feel like you're gonna lose. Like you you feel like you're gonna be pushed, but yeah. you're never gonna be in, in like t- not taken care of with the groove. You know what I mean. The groove is always gonna be there. The blues right. are always gonna be there for you. And I mean, it's and in kind the end, of, he's going to take you somewhere interesting, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of harder, I think, for players that have so much um, innate talent, but also just facility, virtuos- virtuosity on their instruments, abilities. Well, it's it's almost like harder to like pull people in. And I think that's such a you know testament to how Joey was able to like connect with people on that human level, yeah. because you can seem like you're just at another level. I mean... You know, we love the basketball analogies here, but like a Michael Jordan or a Steph Curry or something, it's like, how do they even seem like they're not necessarily one of us? I mean, you know you can't do what they can do, but Joey had a way of pulling it together so it wasn't just like a showing off what I can do and and you feel like you're totally left behind. He was so inclusive the way that he played with other musicians, with the audience. And then if you had the, you know, had the, the honor of being able to meet him in person and talk to him, you see, we see where that came from, from him as a person. Well, I think this started from an early age. Let's, if we can go back, Caleb, uh, share my screen to that clip when he was 17 and play with Miles. Mm. Listen to how mature he, he is with the great power that he has. Mm. So I think most 17 year olds, if they could do what he's doing here, yeah. if they could play all of those really fast 16th note lines, they would overplay almost always. Right. But listen to what happens. So it, he'll he'll find his 16th note. But listen to what he does with it. 
I mean, that's already a super interesting way to start. He's in the pocket here. Yeah. Taking his time. Well, he's quoting Olio there. Yeah. Again, just letting it come to him. Just up to this point, that's already a really mature way to start your solo. Yeah. For yeah. any age, right? But for 17, that's uh, remarkable. While okay. you're walking around with the dookie stick. That's a- <laughs> with the dookie stick. So you might be thinking like, okay, well, that's kind of his gear, right? Yeah. Like he's already in gear. He's not even close to being in gear. No, yet. no. And he's about to go into gear, but listen to what happens. That there. Yeah. Right? So he does this amazing line, you know, this like super... That anybody would be like, yeah. whoa, I just ripped this. And then he goes back into this, you yeah. know, this really relaxed. He's not like crunching down or forcing a bunch of stuff. And he's not automatically going into this like, from there, like just continually ripping. He's like t- p- picking his moments. He's letting it come to him. Yeah. It's amazing. Absolutely. You For know, a 17 year old, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And this is actually the kind of like groove and vamp just over one chord, you know. Yeah. Like this is not easy to put together. It's easy to blow over, but it's not easy to put together a cohesive solo at all. You know, at all, which he definitely does from yeah. the beginning. Let's just a little bit. I mean, I know we've already heard this one. No, no, no. Let's. I mean, taking it out, bringing it back. coming back. Huh. Coming back to the blues. Always coming back to the blues. Sending it. And he's pulling, leading the energy of the rhythm yeah, section. Yeah, listen how the rhythm section is following that. Because you can tell they're like, no, we're not going somewhere unless you unless you show the way. Listen to Market, though. Comes back to the blues at the top yeah. of every eight bars nearly. Tension. Release. Yeah. Space. It's like it's like a lesson in improvisation from a seventeen-year-old. I know for, for it's all of these. It's, ama- it's truly amazing. Yeah, truly amazing at that age to have that kind of wisdom. I mean, someone is in the comments here saying, you know, he's a um, he was a third-generation jazz musician, and I think right. that's the kind of wisdom you can get from you know when your dad is a professional musician. You yeah, know, your grandpa. No, his dad's a great great organist, and you know our condolences to. We should just say his, his father and mother you know, who lost a son, you know, we all lost Joey, but they lost and to, and to Joey's wife, yeah, uh, Gloria and, and, and his children and the family, you know, our, our condolences and thank you for letting, letting us share in Joey, you know, yeah, for sharing absolutely. him with the world. Um, and you know, I, I met Joey right around this time. It might've either been right before, I think it was right at the beginning, but right before he did this tour. But I knew, like, because it was a lot. With Miles? With Miles. That's oh when I first gosh. met him, yeah. It was right after I met Christian. Yeah. And I, uh, Christian McBride, and we actually, I did a gig with Christian. Um, with, wait, this was 88? Yeah. So this actually, so it was a year before. It was in 87. Wow. When I met Joey. But I'd heard about him. I mean, there was a lot of buzz about him. And Christian, had, when I first met him, had said, man, you got to meet my boy. Joey's just killing him. I was like, uh-oh. There's another, uh, uh, you know, it yeah. was like, he was the guy, you yeah. know. And um, I believe he was a yeah a year younger than me, but we were at, there was a jazz festival in Philadelphia. I think it was like the Mellon Bank Jazz Festival or something at the time, but it was at Orchestra Hall in in Philly, and uh, Winton was playing. I had met Winton, and actually, he went and asked me to sit in on a gig here in St. Louis like a few months before that, which was like crazy. And I got up and slopped my way through um, something. My um, Softly, or something softly, like exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I was there, and then I was kind of like, "Oh, maybe I'll get a chance to sit in again. That would be cool." And uh, we're sitting there on the side of the stage. It was me and Christian and Joey. And Went was like, came over and was like, "Yeah, I want y'all to sit in, but 
Christian's the only one with a jacket, so you guys can't sit in. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was me, we just had like jeans on and a t-shirt or whatever. And Christian was smart. Like Christian had the same thing, but then yeah. he had like a little bag yep. and like pulled out his jacket. He's like, oh, his sport sport coat, you know? Yep. And he was like, well, I'm ready to go. But that was when I first met him and, and it was always always a pleasure to see him and uh, Joey and to, to get a little chance to hang with them over the years. And Joe Mascara puts here in the in the comments of, of you know the special connection, Christian McBride, Joey DeFrancesco, Quest Love and Kurt Rosenwinkel all went to high school together, which is, that's a crazy class. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. crazy. And they're always, we're talking about all these, I mean, those are like some of the, the more well-known ones. There's a bunch of other really players that, that, really good players apparently that came, I mean, obviously they came out of there. There's, I, I know a, some wonderful opera singers. I mean, it's just a, you know, Philly's always had a lot of great musicians in that high school. Certainly had a lock on them for several generations, which is, which is great. Amazing. Well, yeah. Peter, it's great to have you back, man. This was super fun. Yeah, it's good to be here. And um, R.I.P. Joey D. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if you'd like to, you know, we always do some questions. At yeah, the end. we'd like to open If you're here and you haven't subscribed to our brand new, this is our secondary, our You'll Hear It channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now, buddies. Yeah, because I don't know if we have it set for this yet, but we're going to be setting it very shortly. We're, we're going to start getting dogmatic about our commenting. Did you know about this? No, I don't. Yeah, you, you're going to have to be... You always ask me if I know, but you never ask me before. <laughs> it's part of the <laughs> shtick, man. <laughs> tell me <laughs> Well, like, I, I mean, this is a spontaneous thing, so... Okay, so you're going to have to be subscribed to this channel okay. in order to, comp, to be able to participate in the chat. That's fair, right? You don't have to pay anything, but yeah. you, you got to only pay with your attention. you got to subscribe. But we promise to only send you content your way that is both... Uh, magnificent and elusive at the same time and aloof as well <laughs>
Nice. Yeah. That was fun. That was Softly as in a Morning Sunrise. Right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think. I'm sorry. Was I looking? <laughs> yeah. Was I looking quizzical? I think it might have been. I think I saw a tinkle in your eye when we started. Saw, that you too. saw a tinkle in my eye. You remember? You remember the first time we were um, setting up with the keyboards? Yeah. With the Hammer 88s. I was a little against the hammers. Remember? But I've gotten acclimated to it now. I need a hammer idea. I'm over here on this Nord Piano 2. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, this is just okay. I mean, I still, you know, sue me. I love, I love real pianos, but... Uh, do you have any... Um, before we go, and yes. we should go. We should go. <laughs> do you have any um, pianistic tips? So, I've... We were working on Out of Nowhere mm -hmm. at Open Studio Pro. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Key of G, right? Yep. And so, you know, there's a, there's the key of G thing that works so well. Right? The like four, three, two, one. Yeah. It just works out perfectly, right? So for those of you who don't know, this is like surrounding all the notes of a G major triad. Ever heard of it? And you go a diatonic tone above, a half step below, and you go four, three, two, one in your hand. So this is a little swipe. But I, we were thinking about more pianistic things like that. What do you have? What do you got? Oh, things that just fall. Just fall in your hand fall. perfectly, yeah. Um, I mean, I to me, some of these, like the kind of fourth type of stuff, that are really just sort of cascading shapes more than anything. But they would be typically similar, if not the same fingering, to if you were playing them as chords, you know. So that would be like... Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm just doing G because we had that. It's probably oh, okay. not the easiest one, actually, but it's like, it's actually, fourth is sort of the underlying pentatonic pattern to it, but there's some triads in there. So you got like F sharp, B, E, and then maybe like, um, like a D major triad, A, D, F sharp. And then to the fourth coming off the B, B, E, A. B, e, a. And then either, if you want to go a little Lydian. And those kind of things, I always Ooh. think we're, we're good if you change it up, you know, yeah. You're literally just doing and then I go like pentatonic off that F sharp minor pentatonic. Yeah. Because that's the underlying, like the, the functional harmony of it. All right, well, you all know what you're doing for the week now. And really, you're just sort of skipping, and, and you already some try. I mean, if you really break this down, it's kind of like, wait, it isn't an exact pattern. It's not. But to me, some of those runs, like if you were to go straight force up the Lydian, that's nice, but it's very like it's, it's cookie it's, cutter. It's a little bit cookie cutter, yeah. but you don't have to throw it out. You just change a few things. I get it. I get it. So you're literally going up the pentatonic scale. Yep. Like that, but then yeah. And most people would think about it because it's Lydian as D. Pen major pentatonic, but I kind of, I, I kind of hear it more as F sharp minor, and that falls nicely on the in the hands, as we say. I mean, probably the the A flat major even more so. Gorgeous. And then those work good on that particular tune, I'm thinking, too, because you go up to the three, you know. Yeah. And then when you get back to the head? Exactly. <laughs> oh, what if we combine it? Ah, no, no, no. That's when it gets You're fun. Make everyone's brains explode. Yep. Super fun. Cool. Well, we're going to be back here next week at our regular time. Uh, you know, we were shifted a day due to the holiday. 
uh, yesterday and some travel stuff. Um, but we look forward to be back. We're going to be back here. I don't, you don't even know about this. Do you know about this? You love it when I say that. I like to keep him on his, on his toes here. You don't know about this either, Producer Caleb. We're going to be live on Mondays from now every week. Yeah. God willing. Almost till December. God willing. Up until December. Yeah, we do know about this. So this we're going to get some momentum. We're going to get the big mo going. Yeah, this is a case where you clearly told us this this morning. Well, so you <laughs> do know it. <laughs> you do know. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything just came into place for this to happen. Where I cleared the schedule know. on Monday. Because I want to do that. I mean, we have so much fun, but I, well, I feel like we've been, I've been um, disrupting the momentum of our Mondays live at 4 p.m. It's all good, man. You know, like we've, we've done, I think we've done a solid effort into being able to put out a lot of content, work with your schedule, but it is good to hear you're going to be here for an extended stretch because yeah. we can just, we can just like pump this new channel. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. We'll be, you'll hear it all the time. We're going to record three episodes uh, now that we're going to be um, put straight to video. So look for those coming up on the YouTube channel this week. Right. And you can only get those if you're subscribed. Well, actually yeah. that's not true, no, but, true. but they're better. It is true. It's in it's color. Way, it's it's it in is. black and white. <laughs> if you're not <laughs> subscribed, <laughs> it's, it's, it's grainy. Like it's very grainy. like HBO back in the day. It's 540 P when your parents didn't pay for it. It's 540 P it's 360 P <laughs> you, you remember when we went up, remember going up on the, on the line and trying to switch on the, from the camera. Yeah. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I did a legal thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks cool. everybody for joining us. And, uh, uh, yeah, until yeah. next time, you'll hear it.